host. Welcome. I'm Fallon Lee O'Brien. I'm your host. And with me is Jessa DeMora of Funnel Cake Marketing. And on today's show, we have some special guests for everyone. We have Michael J. Epstein, Sophia Cassiola, and our uh, additional uh, <laughs> interference guest. Interference He's already guest. interfering. The final guest. <laughs> the final frontier guest. Yes. John Bales. And well, uh, we're very happy to have everyone on the show. This is, uh, this is actually our first show uh, in Somerville Community Access Television set up like this. Yes. So it's special. So it's and a it's, premiere. It's a premiere and it's mm -hmm. the end of the year. Which, so it's like, it's really super special. For those of you who don't know Michael and Sophia, they are directors and musicians, producers, and poets, uh, and, poets and, writers and writers, and play musical instruments, and basically wind it all up together into a wonderful flower of accordion of explosion of creation. Yeah, pretty much explosive. These two are like a Michael Bay film. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having thanks. us. So much. It's it's exciting. I've I've been following these two. Uh, you know, qu quite frequently, not like stalking, though on occasion I have come across you two out in public and I'm like, oh no, I hope they don't think that I'm, that I'm not. Uh, but no, I have been following the two of you and all of the projects that you've, uh, you know, been participating in and it's just really exciting. You're both really good at what you do, uh, and, and and you're good about of speaking about it too. Yes. I and mean, you're one of the most interesting people on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh -uh. And I think you may own and manage <laughs> probably <laughs> the most pages on Facebook too. That could be true. There's so, so tell us some 100. of the Facebook pages you've got. Oh uh, well, there are a lot of them about teaching the controversy. Yes. The, now there's the controversy. The controversy the regarding controversy. Star Wars things. <laughs> right. Um, there's the controversy, like uh, Wrath of Khan for mm -hmm. Star Trek things. Because this actually says something about who you are. You yeah. rip off of things, and then you make uh, stuff out of it. Like right. I don't know too many people who could have made a whole film out of just a small competition for a trailer, mm. um, and you went ahead and did that. Mm. We like doing things that are terrible ideas, is basically. <laughs> we were like, this is a terrible idea. We should definitely go full force and do it. Well, that's, that makes that's it a challenge, of, yeah. and then you get to see whether you succeed. Mm. Yes. People love your terrible ideas. <laughs> well, it seems, yeah. Because <laughs> we all have terrible ideas, mm -hmm. so we can relate. Yeah. yeah. And we can relate to the successes as well. Mm -hmm. So you're both, both based here in Somerville. Mm -hmm. And uh, how long have you been here in Somerville, Somerville area? Um, I think I forced you to move to Somerville in 2005. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, 10 years. Yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah, it's our 10th anniversary in ah! Somerville. Great. <laughs> Great. 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 Cool. Uh, so, like, let's talk about some of your films. Mm -hmm. um, uh, most recently, Light of the Tribbids. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about the inspiration behind that? How did that come to, to be? Yeah. Am I, am I sure. talking about Sure. Go for it. So there was a really great year in vampire films. 1971. 1971 <laughs> was a really great year in vampire films. And especially, um, w we're big fans of both the, like, the Hammer horror kind of vampire films, which they made several that year. And um, we're also big fans of the weird, arty films made by uh, French filmmaker Jean Roland and um, Spanish filmmaker Jess Franco. Mm -hmm. And um, so we decided it would be interesting and also a terrible idea to try to combine those two different vampire worlds, one that's very ethereal and dreamlike, and the other that's very kind of like theatrical. serial, theatrical sort of thing. So we're like, let's make a movie that kind of puts both of those things together. And all of your movies uh, play into sociopolitical stuff that's going on now. Yeah. Yeah. This one's maybe our Enables most, you to most political. Um, what's the What's the point? I call it uh, the patriarchy. <laughs> <laughs> I call it election 2016. <laughs> um, it's about uh, It's the about final election. <laughs> final society, election. Their society has devolved um, <clears throat> into factions and it's a fundamental. And it's they're a really hunting each other <laughs> and uh, and things have gone wrong and there's yeah, throughout polarization time gotten, and and it's yeah. gotten uh, there's a lot of rhetoric. Mm -hmm. That's happening. So yeah. the main character is well. There, there are two. Yeah, there's several. There are oh, two yeah. lead uh, women who are sort of the protagonists of the film, um, and part of it is that the characters have they're, they're sort of immortal um, in being vampires, but they lose their memory after some time. So they don't really have an identity, and they don't really understand the context of 
who they are and where they are and what's going on. Um, so those two main characters are kind of trying to figure that out, while the leader, the sort of antagonist, um, is the, a kind of like religious zealot leader who's sort of hunting down everybody who's not holy and um, and you know is not following the the rules of Bathor as as uh, decided. I don't and know. And so Bathor was originally a vampire who created this small town of vampires, That's right. yeah. setting up the situation. Yeah. And <clears throat> and uh, two women uh, are uh, are lovers, and just like these nineteen seventies right. yeah. vampire films, where all these lush beauties are. Yeah. You know, yeah. And we went very strongly in that direction yes. of very seventies makeup right. and, and clothing and uh, and, and music made a as well. Ourselves. Yeah, we're working on the music right now. Yeah. Actually, now, you <laughs> have some music right that you're lip syncing from the seventies, and you have some of your own. Is that right? um, the lip syncs are just Kickstarter rewards. Okay. So we, for each of our films, we've had to do a Kickstarter just to raise funds. So yes. one of the, the rewards is that we'll lip sync any song you choose. I think that's perfect. So wow. It's kind of fun. It's you fun. Know, we do it from set, and they're silly. And like, I've seen a few. They yeah. are fun. Now, is this the, the biggest crew you've worked for? With the biggest cast, the biggest certainly. cast, I think yeah, something like 30 32, people yeah, 30, 32 count. people. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know. Yeah. And and the, yeah. and the consulting producers, I mean, it's a big, there's a lot of people that have yeah. been involved in this, and you both are doing the directing, the editing, the filming, you're also doing the music, mm -hmm. making the lunch, making the lunches. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of it, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's we, too many jobs, really, but we don't have much choice yeah. for low-budget filmmaking. It, it's hard unless you have a but. lot of money to really farm out stuff, or you're willing to wait a very, very yeah. long time to oh, get Oh, I like this done, format so. of using a, a, a Kickstarter to both raise funds, but also um, engage your audience. Absolutely. That's been and the biggest help for us. It actually you know, actually yeah. spreads the word to lots yeah. more people than would see it otherwise. Certainly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is a yeah. great so And long term, advance. they're so with yeah. us through the whole yeah. project. You know, they're with us from conception to they see us shooting, then they see us going through post, mm -hmm. and then finally it's it's premiered, and then like eventually they have it. So mm -hmm. it's like they're with us for mm -hmm. two or three years mm -hmm. on so that So you're project. building like, these relationships with all of these people who are exactly. your... Fans. Um, or yeah. cats, Henry. Henry the cat. Tell us about Henry the cat. When people back us on Kickstarter, they um, they can choose to put their own name. Oh, um, I was they like, also, who is I know. I, know, I, know, I, know <laughs> I have no idea. And um, they can also include like a, a, a partner. You know, because sometimes yeah. people are backing things. As, I mean, we've got plenty of space <laughs> for the credits. We've got space in the credits. It's always kind of fun to include. Things that so we like. should have Henry the Cat like Fallon's other page, which is Cats, cats for Community, community Capitalism. capitalism. Oh. And, oh. Yeah. You know, I'll, know I'll, what kind of alliance I'll give Henry the Cat a call. Henry. Yes. Yes. No, it's Henry. It's Henry. <laughs> it's Henry. Yeah. No, no we, we like, I mean, we like animals a lot, and so we like to give them credit where credit is due. We spent a lot of time with sheep in our last movie. Uh, the sheep got us. Um, our first movie, one of, the, one of the cast members is a, is a dead fly, so, you know. <laughs> Mervin. We, Mervin the fly. Yeah. <laughs> Mervin the fly. Now this the stuntman, uh, what was a uh, Sisuk Vong Bandit? <laughs> That's Whoa. a great name. What a great name! Yeah. He's a great guy. He's so. a great yeah. guy. And how was that working? You know, what kind of is it action packed? There's there's some pretty uh, intense like fight sequences mm. between the vampires and um, just for safety and us having no clue <laughs> how to choreograph such a thing. Um, my kid met Sisuk on another set <clears throat> and brought him in to choreograph this and make sure everybody was safe with falling and rolling and lifting each other up and it's not like a heavy fight it's not like a <clears throat> no and luckily heavy fight. we're working with people that are used to stage combat and very athletic and like used to certain dancing and, and stuff so like they had some background already which is it, yeah. through casting which is great but but when you have to throw people down to the ground yeah it's like a 10 more. 12 person fight scene yeah, yeah. Ooh, you know. sexy so, yeah <laughs> um, and you just it, really the big thing for us is we just didn't want anybody to get hurt so, right because yeah. yeah. we're like yeah. what, you know we know kind of what we want to do but we need to make sure that it's going to be done we need somebody whose eyes are on it to make sure that the yes. way that people are operating they're not going to break mm -hmm. somebody's arm and just to go through it slowly and be like yeah. this is how you land you know <laughs> rather yeah. than just go throw each other around and well this is good for quality okay. I mean, yeah. Yeah. yeah we we've never done i don't think we've ever really done any we did like a neck breaking in, in 10 we have one sort of we have some small stunts but nothing that was like this kind of extended yeah, Like a neck thing. breaking thing where you have like a soundtrack Somebody where you have snaps, carrots being snapped and things? Um, yeah. What we, was the sound? I don't remember, but we did use something, yeah, right. something along those lines. Yeah. yeah. It's a really gross, it's a gross sound that yeah. is made when the neck is broken, but yeah. yeah. It's usually fruit. 
Mm. <laughs> Some sort, you know. Should we bring in the interference guest? I think it's interference it's guest time. Uh -oh. yes. so, so you watched these um, trailers and uh, have a completely fresh take on this, being new to it. Say, <laughs> say whatever you'd like to say, John Bales. <laughs> Any questions? I, I was particularly taken with 10. <laughs> We're all stuck in pens. We're stuck in our jobs and our families and our educational systems. And they're all fake and hollow, and we all secretly know it. We're all starving for life so we consume things. We buy useless crap the television sells to us as personality. We replace our perfectly good clothes season after season to ape rebirth. We stick our animals in pens and stuff them full of fake nutrients, and they grow sick and miserable, but oh so large and fat. When they can't get any fatter, we butcher them and stuff ourselves with their flesh, thinking that's going to fill us up. But it never does, so we keep eating and eating. We'll swallow anything we can get our hands on. We'll swallow anything to avoid the fact that at the end of the day, when we take up our clothes and our makeup, at ourselves in the mirror. We don't know who we are at all. We're empty. Not even really sure if we exist. And uh, how no one uh, uh, is who they seem to be. Mm -hmm. Not even me. Yeah. Right. That's true. Yeah. Not even you. Yeah, yeah. Fourth wall. So. <laughs> well, yeah. as a Zen priest, this is sort of your stock and trade. Well, that's the rumor. Yeah. Specializing yeah. in religious non-thinking and the destruction of meaning. 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 Yes. Well, that's yeah. a rumor. Yeah. Well, it's funny. There's there's actually a uh, uh, a second century Buddhist sutra about projections and how we're all uh, projecting and how we confuse one another's projections and how we adjust our projection to be in line with other people's mm -hmm. so that uh, we live in a world where as long as our projections are uh, congruent, shall we say, we think we know who one another are and we agree that we're in relationship. And then once they start shifting a little bit, we go, you're not Whoa. the person I married. <laughs> That's pretty like much exactly here. what 10 is about. Yeah. Yeah. It's like hilarious. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even the person you married. When you married me. Yeah. Right. It all changes every day, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Ten is really, it's a, it's a film yeah. that um, we were interested in doing, like, a, sort of inspired by the kind of mystery trope, like the Ten Little Indians kind of Agatha Christie. So this has uh, multiple sort of uh, echoes to it. How did this start, please? Um, yes, yeah, yeah. Do you want to talk about the beginning of it? <clears throat> yeah, we were doing, um, so we had just gotten into filmmaking, really, and had done a bunch of music videos, and we are kind of looking at opportunities to keep trying <laughs> and so mm -hmm. we entered this bridal has a film comp film trailer competition every so this is summer. a bridal theater in cambridge, cambridge yeah. massachusetts which has great film programming yeah. yes we are there a I lot love it. <laughs> um so it was the 10th year doing that and mm -hmm. they assigned the title 10 and so mm -hmm. like some vague things you pulled down from a list like castle or mystery or whatever and so we made this trailer and then we had so much fun doing it and the cast that we got together just kind of just posting like who wants to show up and, and be in this trailer um, were really great and they really wanted to just go for it and make it a feature so we're like all right well if we do a Kickstarter and we raise a little bit of money let's try and do it and so we did and we rented a mansion in Rhode Island for and your shabby. filming schedule was like <laughs> noon till 8 a.m. or something for like yeah 10 for, straight days yeah. and somehow you survived yeah we were getting like two three hours of sleep I think I overslept one day because I slept like a third hour. <laughs> that was uh, late uh, to uh. say. <laughs> it was very physically brutal. Yeah. It, was, it was horrible. It, yeah, it was the worst physical experience. It was experience also like they chose this house because what were you looking for in a, in a set? Something that looked old. Oh. So part of the problem with our films is we try to create these worlds, and they're often not set in the timeline that we're in <laughs> currently. So it's and so you appropriate are, things like the fronts of say the um, the the castle on top of. Um, the, the armory. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And pretend that that's a castle gate. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So there's a lot of faking the exteriors right. with the interiors. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we found this mansion that actually looked old on the inside. Um, the movie said in 1971. Yeah. So it's not. Well, it's not that hard. crazy. It just, but it just can't be. You know, so many places you can rent are like stainless steel everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everything is brand new. They haven't yet quite got to same. avocado green and Torino bronze. 
<laughs> I love <laughs> marigold. <laughs> and avocado. <laughs> but they did have flowers on the wallpaper. And, those and it might have been flocked. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. so, yeah, so we're looking for like kind of that classic 70s mystery house. Yeah. And, and we found it. It took me a while. Um, and you so, appropriate all kinds of places for your set. So you also used the, um, the car museum. Or at least you've gotten the car from the car museum. At, mm. For uh, our music video arrival. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that had another director, Ted Cormier, who's okay. amazing. And he hunted down the craziest cars, like that British, was it? Like it was Rolls Royce. That was great. I love how it appears as the real car, and then there's a toy car, and there's this sort of um, mm -hmm. blurring of animation and uh, model making and yeah. reality and the different kinds of camera looks. Were there actually different kinds of cameras that you used? On arrival, I think it was all the same camera, but there were models. Mm -hmm. um, Juliet Schneider made a bunch of models for mm -hmm. that, uh, for things that were just going to be impossible to build. Right. <laughs> right. So. Do you find at night when you go to sleep, like, are your dreams just wackadoodle? <laughs> I think dreams are always wackadoodle, yeah. right? Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. With, uh, with Magnetic, there's several dream sequences, and one of them is like, you know, this uh, this uh, animal, the spider, is like advancing on the on the lead and like grabbing at their face and stuff. And at one of the screenings, somebody was like, "Why is the dream so terrifying?" <laughs> I'm like, "Have you not had this dream? <laughs> like, everybody's had this dream where you wake up at the last moment. Yes, you know, yes. Right, terrifying. You find, you find your cat's, you know, right to cross. And it was just like it was the most bizarre yeah. question to me because I was like, "Yeah, you must have a very calm life." Yeah, right. Yeah, sure. They just pushed me off the cliff when I woke up. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And you're falling, and yeah. then suddenly you're fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So ten. We we. Oh yeah. Quite we kinda, so ten. Back to the tale. Ten yeah. women in a mansion, um, mysteriously dying. Uh, oh, I get that, Christie. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then um, it turns out that really and the movie. Then there's the French film, Ten Women. There, there is, but that's. Okay. Yeah, but Didn't that's know, I mean, but that's interesting because it's rare that there are films with. Only women. Only women in them, or like mm -hmm. ensemble cast of women. Mm -hmm. It's extremely rare. It's quite very, very few. Yeah. Um, but uh, so the the point of the movie is really to take those kind of character tropes that are common in these sorts of films, and then to like explore those and talk about how basically everybody decides to present their their identity as whatever their is is useful at the moment. And, Fascinating. Um, it's and that we all really my my and view of the thesis is that we all we all have no identity. Just choose. And it's arbitrary. Our paths mm -hmm. are arbitrary um, based on our circumstances. Yeah. Because we often don't have any idea which one we're choosing. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. ten is ten. When did ten come out? Ten came out officially last April. Okay. Um, it's on VOD. It's on Amazon. It's yes, on it is. Play. So you can actually go see it. <laughs> yes, it actually has like little star Comfort. ratings and everything on Amazon. Yeah, you can rate cool. it. You can right. say it was the best or worst movie you've ever you can, seen. Which <laughs> The reviews are great because the reviews are hilarious. The, a lot of them. Well, so it's a very it's a strange movie, and so people there are a lot of people who go to it or go to watch it, and they're like, I expected to see a slasher movie that yeah. had like lots of this stuff in it, and it was a weird art movie, and I'm angry now, um, which is great. <laughs> I love those kind of reviews. So we get some of those, and then we get other people who are just random like it. thing. My favorite <laughs> review was the guy who was like, "These women are over 30, which. Like maybe half of them were, but like Why is that, that was the end of the sentence. These women are over thirty. Period. Like the too book. Much. The yes. book was based. Was done before the movie. After. After the movie. Yeah. So okay. Jade was very involved. Jade in, Sylvan. Yes. yes. Jade is um, a poet and a writer and awesome. And also here in Somerville. Uh, Cambridge. Cambridge. Oh. Mm -hmm. A different town entirely. Cross the line. <laughs> but Jade really helped us. Uh, like Mike wrote like the initial screenplay with my help and everything, but then Jade came in and we all worked together on dialogue and like what each of the characters' motivations were and stuff like that um, before we went into shooting and then kind of helped mold the characters with us. And then after we were done shooting, we we're like, wouldn't it be great to have a book <laughs> about like a novelization because that was like a thing that people used to do. Except the book is really different. It's very different um, because the the film the part of the idea of the film is that the characters have no identities and they have I mean it's hard to talk about too much without sort of spoiling the the idea the the concepts in it but um, we kind of learn that they have backstories of some kind but we don't really know what mm -hmm. much about them and so the book actually each chapter is told from the perspective of one of the characters and it goes from sort of their back history up until the point in the story in the movie where, where they, they die, die. Mm -hmm. um, and so it goes through kind of an order of death of yeah. characters. So it's like a very different experience. John, wouldn't this make a great art installation where there are, you know, some sorts of um, 
body figures that you can map your own identity or well, your I was thinking about identity whether, onto. You know, you could have those marketable creatures like from Star Wars or, mm -hmm. or something. For the, the action figures. Action figures. Yeah. 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 You definitely do a game, like yeah. a clue. Like yeah, we talked yeah. about making a board game. Who killed who? Yeah, 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 we just what? Yeah. <laughs> You never got a fold out to book. We too, gave up know. eventually. No, it's not that <laughs> fancy. Yeah. Has Tin premiered at Brattle? Yeah, at okay. uh, the Boston Underground Film Festival Ooh. in 2013? 2014. 2014. Yes. Okay. All right, so that was your first major feature film. film, yeah. <laughs> and then the second <laughs> is Magnetic. 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 Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about that? No, you can. No, you can. Right. You start it. All right. I want to interrupt. He hasn't seen yeah. it. Did you watch the trailer? Let's just map an identity maybe. onto it, John. <laughs> magnetic is kind of like, you know, we're very, this again, we're, magnetic. we're into this. This is a cassette. Will Lockman. <laughs> magnetic. Nice. Um, it's sort of like existentialist sci-fi, um, and we it's about one character kind of coping with the terrible realities of the world. And, yeah, and, so and kind of, uh, she, the character kind of, fails at her life in New York and goes back to her weird hometown in western New York huh. and, um, mm. <laughs> <laughs> and gets a very strange job like working in this underground bunker on a sheep farm um, and then it turns out that she's like the only one who can stop the world from being destroyed and there's Solar some time travel and destroying the earth yep. and the character until gets, the end of the world yeah the character yeah. gets thrown yeah. back a week each time. The did you did you see that at, at, at last week at the Brattle? No, I've seen it before, but I didn't see it last week. Yeah, I, we had tickets and we wound up having to give them to Fallon and oh. Alexan here, and they enjoyed it instead. Yeah, which is great. Um, how do you choose the title? How did Magnetic the title? What was the original title that I was? Tiny leaves are dancing. No, there was sleeping. like a there, you, there are these sites where there's strange translations of. Um, Phrases like so, people put up English signs in in Asia, and they're mm -hmm. they have really strange wording. Yes, and one of them was like, "Don't." It was like basically, "Don't walk on the grass." Um, but it said like, "Tiny leaves are dreaming" or something, and I was like, "That's such a great phrase!" Like, I love it. <laughs> and so we started writing this movie um, with the sort of working title. I think it's "Tiny leaves are dreaming," right? Something like tiny, that. Sleeping. Tiny, yeah. tiny grass. Whatever, something along those lines. It aggravated me. <laughs> 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 so I came up with magnetic because um, of the magnetic tapes yeah. and mm -hmm. cassette tapes and magnetic. Well, there are a lot, so of, it meanings it to, a lot yeah. of meanings to the time travel and the solar flares and yeah. the earth. And so actually, is a, is a very apt. It's title, a nice one word, simple say. title. Yeah. More than Chinese. And time was chosen for us. It's attractive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you don't mind sharing with the viewers, like the creative process, you know, sitting down and just starting. Are you? Is there? Is it paper? Is it computer? Mm -hmm. Is it typewriter? Yeah. Is it? I mean, do you like lock yourself in a room and like, come in for days? In I think it's like know? months of chatting, chatting at first. Yeah. That's kind of the way. Well, at least for magnetic and blood of the tribbets. Um, it usually starts out as a as a weird idea that like we talk about idea. for a really long time. Yeah. So this mm -hmm. magnetic actually started out because Sophia was, was like, I want to make a movie with one character who's in a space capsule, and, and Earth, sees the Earth, Earth is destroyed. So they're the last human. Mm. And like, what do they, you know, yeah. how do they, what does that mean? What does it mean to be? And so we couldn't afford to go to space to film the movie. <laughs> <laughs> so we rewrote it. It'll um, soon be affordable. <laughs> we rewrote it so it took place on Earth. Um, and it's, it's one character um, having the experience of basically like trying to determine what it, what it means to be, to exist and whether there's any reason to Continue. perpetuate existence of humanity or the world or whether you know, we should just accept that the fate of this uh, solar flare destroyed everything. Mm. Um, and so we talked about it for many, many months. Um, and then I think we start outline. The first thing we do is outline things. Like, so we say, okay, here's what we want it to end. Like, here's what we want. Here's some things we want to happen. And it kind of like starts to get fleshed out. And eventually, there's like a pretty full outline of like, here are the events in the thing. Um, and then we just go in and start start writing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's usually. The, that part, the writing part, is fairly quick, I think. Right, would yeah. you say that? Yeah, I'd say like usually like the outline you will put together. And yeah. then like I come through <laughs> with a red pen. They tell me it's all terrible. And then yeah, <laughs> and we start over. <laughs> <laughs> but just because I think you have more of like, that is like more one person, just sit down and get it all out, you know. And then we mold together for a long time. Yeah. But the initial idea and the molding is, is both of us. And we like to think uh, at that stage, we also, I mean, especially with Magnetic, where we had these dream sequences that we, we had. So there are dreams and there are flashbacks, because a lot of it is about how the brain works and how like we, 
we mesh our realities with like things that how our dreams fit into our realities and how our memories fit into our realities. And this character is absorbing memories from other versions of herself in the in the film. So there's various like it's like a multiverse kind of thing. Mm. Um, and so we wrote those like kind of vaguely. We say like here are the things we need to accomplish with those segments, but let's not really write them in detail. And then we so wrote we the rest of the film. We, we filmed a bunch of stuff, and then we said okay, we need to like we want to cut this dialogue out, but in order to do that, we need to add some visual elements in one of the flashbacks that help explain that idea. Mm -hmm. um, so it was nice because we can, rather than writing a full script and handing it off to somebody who then has to make the movie, we get to go through the iterative process of like making part of it, looking at it and saying like, I don't really like how this works, maybe we can replace that with something yeah. over here and then we and shoot that. And that was easier with Magnetic because it was just the cinematographer and the actor, Alex mm -hmm. Mortis, so we shot it over like nine months. Mm -hmm. um, so we were kind of, we were editing and working on it as we went and we're like, okay, we need to like restructure this scene or whatever and then we're shooting it in a month. So it, it kind of gave us a lot of leeway to like right. adjust yeah. as we went along. And I would say the script was a little bit more loose than it would have been if we handed it to somebody else, you know, <laughs> for sure. Um, yeah. So we, we knew we, going into it that like we were gonna work around what we were able to get done. Mm -hmm. Um, which was cool, and then, you know, but like with Blood of the Tribbit, it's like, it had to be a full script because we're shooting it, we shot it over the course of like two months worth of weekends with 32 people, so, yeah. so it was a little bit different yeah. experience. All of them have been a very different shooting experience, I would say. Mm -hmm. Now, how many lives do you have? Because <laughs> I know you also teach at Northeastern, mm -hmm. yeah. and have uh, you also got you okay, go into bands, bands. <laughs> yeah. You were yeah. just out in LA for a fat I didn't go to LA for oh, okay. that, but um, I I'm in the movie more Fat. About you are in the movie <laughs> Fat. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, which is really, it just came out. Uh, you should go watch it. It's about a man, Mel Rodriguez, who's a very popular actor right now. Uh, he's on a bunch of awesome TV shows. Uh, he plays this guy who's struggling with food addiction and um, just his own psyche himself, I would say. And uh, so it's just kind of a look at his life, and I'm in one scene with him. Yeah. That's very um, cool. John has a question. Well, oh, no, okay. it's a great, um, powerful scene, the conversation you had. Did you watch that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah it's terrific. And he's really great. Uh, yeah, he's I watched that really scene, capable. too. That was awesome. He's very good. Actually. He's very yeah. we like, <laughs> you know. He, he's really capable of getting, you know, because how he is, he, but he's capable of expressing uh, uh, the, the, the difficulty of a situation mm -hmm. uh, uh, that he's caught in, maybe. Yeah. You know, right. that he's an exemplar of, let's put it that way. Yeah, it's and a it's very, very raw, powerful that way. Yeah, raw movie, yeah. and it doesn't shy from um, really like exposing like the the negative aspects yeah. of of a person's personality. Because yeah, sure. then, it, and in other scenes, it shows that he's funny and cool, and he's you know he has good friends, but then he's such a jerk, you know, to, at other times, mm -hmm. and like really hates himself at other times. So yeah. it's like it really shows like all the aspects of somebody's personality, and I think. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of self sabotage. Yeah, and, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. and people and at the at the screening were like, "Why does why, why is he so unlikable? <laughs> yeah, why is like, there a happy ending?" Right. <laughs> it's like, well, so it's like real life. Like it's, it's a very real movie, raw. Yeah. So yeah. it's a cool movie. So um, oh, that's, that's our so friend. bothersome about most American people. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah like, but Mark Finney's the director. He's yeah. a local guy. Yeah. Um, so. It's yeah. cool. Check it out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that just came out this week. It just came out this oh. week. Yeah. yeah. So we actually helped with sound on his second film that's in right. post now too. So mm -hmm. now yeah, since so you've, done, a how, you've done so much with sound in so many different realms, and the, yeah. the band and so forth. Tell us a little bit about the band that you're in. How, which one? I mean, there. Well, there's the which Michael Jackson right, right, library, and there's the <laughs> Darling <laughs> Pet Monkeys, Monkeys. Yeah. Yeah. and then there's Oh, Forsake Do Not Forsake Me, do not forsake me my, da my Darling. darling. Space balloons. Space balloons. <laughs> Let's keep the list. Let's start a band. So no. space balloons is like right. a, okay. a children's <laughs> band project that we had. Um, and Darling Pet Monkey is kind of a, just a side project with our friend Catherine Caposi, mm -hmm. who's an axe monkey. Who's um, doing all the score? Who's done all the scoring with, the with score, us? She's worked sure. with us on on, on all the films with score. Um, so that was kind of like those are like side projects. And then so my main project is Do Not Forsake Me, My Darling. It's two people. <laughs> um, oh. I play drums and sing. Michael plays Me. bass, mm. and it's all based on this TV show called The Prisoner from the yes. 60s. Sure. So um, with McGowan, Pet uh, Patrick McGowan, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, really great, awesome 
show. Yes, I, I remember hearing the music to it, music going is great. to sleep yeah. and being frightened. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The music is really awesome in it. And so all of the songs are based on episodes, and we do these music videos that are recreations of scenes. Well, we've done two. <laughs> and, uh, so, but the music's very raw. Like I just scream a lot, and, uh, and it's very funky. <laughs> so, and then the Michael J. Epstein Memorial Library is Michael's main songwriting outlet. And that is. Um, I just accumulate a lot of people who play. Uh, interesting instruments so it's got it's a, it's we, we sort of call it like baroque pop but I, that's kind of a silly name but that's sort of the genre it's um like viola and flute and then sort of standard guitar bass drums um glockenspiel, and glockenspiel melodica yeah mm-hmm. um and if there's room for an oud you'll yeah whatever you know, you know like if there's people yeah. that want to come there play men. french horn <laughs> We've we're, been adding a lot of French horn to the really soundtrack. It, yeah. well, you were obsessed with horn, didn't you? I played the trumpet for the trumpet. You know, good. from from whenever you start in grade school through <laughs> high school. Now, when you're sitting down and and going and and you know creating the score, do you are you watching? Are you, you're actually you're watching it, and you're mm-hmm. are you just are you invoking the the emotion from the the film and from the characters, and just how does that come together? Yeah, the score. Can you talk about that a um, yeah, most most of the time. I mean, what we often do is we start out not looking at the movie. We develop some musical ideas mm-hmm. um, first, and then we look at those and we say, okay, do these plug into different places? And um, that gives us a, an ability to kind of ignore the movie for a minute and build a kind of sound library or kind of sound type, you know, so we have an idea of what we want the thing to sort of feel like. And um, then does that reflect, then you change, might change the movie to... I recut after, that? so that's actually, I mean, that's that's one of the, the benefits of doing all the work ourselves. Because mm. um, in the traditional way, you would have to like picture lock the movie, send it to somebody to score, and then they would score on top of that. But what we do now is we score... Uh, sometimes we'll watch it and score mm-hmm. to it, and then I'll recut the movie. So to, it's more like a dialogue or, between the two exactly, parts. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You, you just made me think of this film from the early '60s called the uh, English translation, which is poor. The elevator to the uh, guillotine, oh. uh, <laughs> uh, 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 with Jean Moreau and uh, Miles Davis and his group at that time. They made the movie. They shot the That's film, right. and then they had uh, his trio come in and watch the movie. And as they watched the movie. Uh, Ad lib the, uh, yeah. the mm. soundtrack. Mm. Yeah. It was spectacular. Yeah. It's my favorite. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah. Music. So yeah. for Blood of Trivets, mm-hmm. you're, it's currently in post production. Yeah. And when? What do you? What's the timeline? What do you? When are you trying to complete it? By. Well, it was, I heard something about the end of this year. Yeah, we want to get. If we're, we're crazy. As close as possible to um, the end of the year, because um, we want to submit to festivals that sure. are. Uh, so what festivals deadlines. would you submit to? Tell us about this. Namely, the Boston Underground Film Festival. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. We premiered our last two movies there, so we're hoping they'll they'll like this one too. Um, so yeah, so their deadline's the end of this month, and so we want to have something pretty done. <laughs> to yeah, to I mean, it's it's a film. It has a lot of it's. Um, it has a lot of content that is for specific audience, kinds of audiences. There's a lot of violence and nudity in it. So, a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, so uh, for in terms of film festivals, like you know, we have to oh, pick yeah. the ones that we are pick genre festivals. I mean, we're making genre films. We're mm-hmm. not making standard dramas. Mm-hmm. Um, so we go to like the horror, and sci-fi, and fantasy festivals more so yeah. than it's not Sundance. gonna play at Sundance or something yeah. Yeah. It's, not, it's not like an indie drama with like yeah a, you know, with the celebrity maybe yeah. bum dance <laughs> <laughs> well just something I really liked uh, about my take on your trailers mm-hmm. is uh, there's a sense of uh, uh, self-awareness and reflection and irony yeah in them and, and an irony that's not a cynicism it's like yeah. a, a sense of humor about yeah, uh, our odd juxtaposed lives. Yeah, we I hope so. There's a lot of dark humor in everything we yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Does that come from like your upbringing, and family, and friends, and I mean, it must just come from. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I don't know. Yeah. It comes from our our uh, projected identities. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah projected identities. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> our multiple projected yeah. identities. Yeah. Well, one of our favorite filmmakers is David Lynch. Who? Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, if you yeah. watch like Twin Peaks. There's, like, Bob is so horrific, but then he's at the diner eating pie, and it's, like, yeah. it's so hilarious because it's in relation to how scary it all is. It's so is. contrastive. Yeah, yeah. and so um, just being able to weave through, like, that, you know, is, like, and one these, of our favorite things. Yeah, these ambiguities and oppositions are in all our lives. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. As, especially as we're more connected through so many different means. There's just this big jumble of stuff. You know, you look at any news program, and it's you know it's this horrible thing going on in Syria, and then all of a sudden, you know, you have maxi pad commercials, and it's like, 
what? <laughs> you know, yeah. it's nuts. Constantly. I think our movies are basically horrible bombings and maxi pad commercials combined. Like yeah, that's, that's our Can you think of it, the invasion of the maxi pads? Yeah. <laughs> Flying. Um, Terrifying. Delivered by drones. <laughs> The truth is, I, I mean, I grew up watching, really, really being interested in, like, exploitation and B-movies, and it's, the, the main reason was that I was like, these people are just doing whatever they want, and, like, yeah. making something that does not, it, it doesn't have to cater to, they don't care about, like, right. why They can put audience. women in films. They can put yeah. black oh, people in films. I mean, like, you know, yeah. it's like it wasn't happening. Those, it was only in those kind yeah. of films where you had protagonists, like, action protagonists who were, like, black women. You know, yeah, you it still doesn't happen. No, it still isn't happening. We haven't caught up to the 70s exploitation <laughs> films yet. It's sad. It is. Um, it's pretty pathetic. Yeah, yeah, it is. So, you know, so coming from that world, it, I, I sort of got the sense, like, oh, you really can just, like, do strange things uh, or do things that interest you, and and you'll find. I mean, there, it's not going to be a three hundred million dollar movie, um, you know that that's wide theatrical release. Well, I think but the there's fans an audience of these things yeah. because the movies are B movies and low budget. They're used to seeing low budget things, and um, yeah. they're used to seeing that experimentation and weirdness. Well, and they want to. That's see what that. you want. They yeah, want that's what that, I want right. to see when I go yeah. to a movie. Yeah. You know, so. So you can find an audience that's just small. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what, you know, there. when I talked, I mean, we were just going through the uh, for getting distribution for Magnetic, which is, has been, we've signed deals and now right. it is so it's we're coming out. But in, in those conversations with the distribution people, they were like, thank you for making a movie that's not just trying to like replicate a Hollywood, a Hollywood movie with like no money because that's that's you can't compete. It's not totally. yeah, you can't compete. Yeah. Like you know, you go to those movies, and if you have a certain, we'll say, intelligence, it's you. You feel the algorithm running through it, and yeah. you feel the manipulation yeah. of exactly. your emotions and your feelings, and you go, "What the fuck is this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. This isn't what life is like, and it's yeah. not what I'm interested in." Mm -hmm. yeah. That's how we feel yeah. as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we keep Just going crazy. to like big budget sci-fi yeah. movies, and we're like. You're yeah. so close. Yeah. You have everything. You have all the elements. So much, something so much more charming and authentic about low budget because you really have to get creative. Right. And you have to you have to be real. Real. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a generic. <gasps> <gasps> oh, gotcha. Wow. Gotcha. I didn't know it was so dangerous. On the show. Yeah. yeah. Nobody warned He's us. Even vaporized. He's been vaporized. This is one of the most dangerous shows on Channel Three. Yeah. <laughs> Ten in the morning. Nobody told us that. Ten in the morning. Ten in the morning. Wow. It's a good time. It's a good time. I don't know if I'd want to wake up to me. <laughs> Ten in the morning. For a sip of coffee and you're like, who's that crazy person? <laughs> I would. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Well, I guess maybe 10. That maybe showed. And 10. And I don't know, what are the odds? You know? Yeah. <laughs> so so I want to ask a question now. I'm going to just refer to a little bit of notes I took. Yeah. I was impressed with the um, how parallel some of the things you do are to that age of dark romantic novels of the early 19th century, uh, which were an attack. You know, the, the authors like Poe and Blake and Hawthorne and Coleridge. Um, that we're using phantasmagoric imagery and uh, sort of an indulgent, dark um, uh, way of attacking uh, stuff that was happening societally, um, everything from the Enlightenment to um, uh, the um, uh, aristocratic and social norms of the day to the Industrial Revolution happening everywhere. And so this was this backlash of let's be romantic let's, yes let's 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 use zero in on emotion and in on um, intuition which are the things that we really can assess life with uh, more uh, more clearly and forget about all of this uh, this other stuff so I, I thought this was a, somehow parallel and I wonder what you might have to say about that I mean I think uh, it's interesting because all all of the the, the paths through like science fiction and horror and all these things, it's always been about like subtext and always been about using the, those mm. kind of like stories to talk about things you weren't really allowed to talk about mm -hmm. otherwise, mm -hmm. you know, that you can't, mm -hmm. you may not be able to directly confront these things or it may not really be something that people will <coughs> want to experience, mm -hmm. but you can like kind of... It's a way to examine society without getting in trouble. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, science fiction especially has I mean, always been, has always and been that. And that's one thing that we complain about with current science fiction, like big budget Hollywood movies, is like they're yeah. not examining anything. It's like an action movie and there's no like thoughts on what's happening today. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are movies like that, but... 
overall, that's where I get lost. I'm like, no, my science fiction should be telling me something, yes. you know, about what I'm moments, experiencing. You know, we're really, like, questioning what are robots. Yeah. And, and what does that mean for us, and what is synthetic intelligence, mm -hmm. and wh right. what are these things? And now it's just enthralled people. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Blow it up. Yeah. Um, but I think, yeah, I mean, uh, Paul very Make it into a that, war. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, um, I guess we're used to seeing that. Yeah. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, that you, you can kind of trace through that path, the writing mm -hmm. influences uh, through that path of, of, you know, those those kind of writers. And, I mean, you could go back probably for forever into <laughs> into ancient times and find that, that sort those sort of ideas mm. that are kind of influencing their way, you know, into, into modern times. But... Um, well, life is cyclical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. but, um, but definitely, I mean, I think subtext is really the... To me, I don't even want to watch a movie without subtext. Like, I don't even care. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm going to be told something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, we're John and I are particularly fond of Blake and actually have, um, uh, well, the, the, that, that you have some quotes that you like to rattle off at times. Oh, well, my, my, one of my favorite of his is, is how the, the uh, poets created the world and created city and then uh, then later uh, priests and then politicians came along and, and so on there's this process mm -hmm. but there's always the process of creating mm -hmm. you know and and creating so so a large part of I think what happens in these budget films is their big budget films is they're they're maintaining the status quo and the power structure right, right. and and not helping people to think of you will call it subtext but you could say the inter interstices of, of how the objects of our thinking and being and relating to one another, wh what's in those spaces? Mm -hmm. right? And what does it imply that I'm doing this action in this movie, you know? Right. And how does it shield somebody down? And, and then if you can do something in, in a film that's thought through, that so what if it's low budget, but it confronts that? Mm -hmm. right, right. That's really important. It might even provide you know? solutions. Yeah, that's, a, that's are, the function of poetry too. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Who know? said it that artists yeah. would? Artists are the underground legislatures. Who was that? To quote? I don't know that one. I like it. Mm. <laughs> Maybe you said it's it. You. I just said that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's your, your and yes, yeah, it's the first thing that will be struck down. Yes, <laughs> like, yeah. get rid of all the arts. first that came for the poets. Move out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it cut was the budgets and schools cut it. and remove yeah. all the arts. Raise yeah. the rents and get out. <laughs> well, fortunately, there's some uh, legislative action now, which has uh, uh, redressed the ills of No Child Left Behind and restoring arts right. now to mm -hmm. uh, a better position of importance for kids, which mm -hmm. is good. Yeah. Well, um, golly gee, I mean, this has been one of the best interviews I've ever been a part of. Well, now, wait a minute. We have to have John ask a few questions okay. from the Zen priest point of view, or from some point oh of view, God. which he will choose, since his identity is malleable. <laughs> <laughs> Or non-existent. Or non-existent. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, you know, uh, this may sound crazy, but also on your website there was this uh, advertisement for the two pills that uh, cure the cold. Yeah. Do you remember that's that? That's our friend Jim McDonald. That, so that's, yeah, that's not us, but that's... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Manicorn. Manicorn. Check it out. Yeah. Manicorn. Was, I, I yeah. was yeah. really... Yeah. Uh, that was, I was great. stunned by that. But <laughs> also great. that on your site you, you make all these different things. Uh, and then you can, yeah, you collaborate with yeah. all these people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We try to promote other people. We you know. try to get our hands yeah. <laughs> in everybody's cookie jar. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, we are just so happy to um, encourage others to, to work in Boston. As and it should be, To yes. help as much as we can. So we're often on sets doing sound because it's something that we uh -huh. sort of know something about. Yeah. Um, or, uh, you know, just like whatever, camera, PA, like whatever people need, we try to show up if they're cool. I have a question, which is, <laughs> why, why, do you find Boston a supportive environment for uh, filmmaking? Yes. I think it's supportive among, uh, like, among people, like, uh, audience, and, uh, and among people interested in filmmaking. The problem is that we don't really There's have no, a lot of industry here. Well, the industry moves in with their own catering yeah. from LA yeah, and yeah. their own mm -hmm. everything and um, they just buy up time from the city. Right. So, but that's because people will be like, no, Hollywood shoots here all the time and they do, but they don't use a lot of well, local actors well, and actresses and crew or anything. Right. Well, there's so, also no local infrastructure really right. or, and right. permitting for things and getting right. sets. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah it's absolutely. very difficult. And so like when we go to a city and we're like, can we have a permit to do this? It's very difficult for us to get it at an affordable rate or to have them talk mm -hmm. to us at all. Yeah. 
So, so we just don't get permits. Mostly we don't get permits. <laughs> but um, no, but I think it's like no, a similar problem that we have. We don't close down No, we don't close down the bridge. Right. We don't. We, that's just right. so Tom Cruise can run across yeah. it. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, and so it's the same thing that we came up with with music is like there's not a lot of industry here for those things, but we're trying to make it happen, you know? Yes. <laughs> and that's why so. we want to support other people because we want yeah. to see more. And the more there is, the more, you know, and the more like somebody like Mark gets his movie out fat and it, people might start looking and saying like, what else is going on in this weird town, you yeah. know? <laughs> Do you see potential with what's happening with uh, Mayor Walsh's new administration and Julie Burroughs' actions on this part? I think it doesn't affect us because we yeah. are so far below the radar? Of the radar of that. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I think the budgets where they start kicking in is like 100000 Well, she plans to centralize permitting and yeah. all of the you know, kinds of things that have to yeah. do with... More streamlining. So, well, yeah. hopefully eventually I think it'll be the easier. Big, the biggest thing with all of these, I mean, with we have this problem too with like, I mean, this is a whole other conversation, but with like SAG and other kind of union yeah. things, is that they don't do a really good job of tiering things so that like... Low your, enough for us. <laughs> your $20,000 movie can find a way to work with people that is viable. Um, mm-hmm. And I think the same thing with the permitting and the other you know, the other aspects. They need to find a way to like tear the stuff out so they say, well, if your movie is really like this, we're just gonna you know, waive charges or charge very relatively little. Um, we're not gonna send you the same contract as we send to like the giant $50 million Hollywood production. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that I think is problem, that's been the biggest right. problem for us in terms of engaging with those things but at the same time we just kind of we just don't we just choose not to engage right. with those things i mean that's 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 yeah. the the option that we have to choose because so it's not they're, viable. they're unlikely you're unlikely to call on the uh the union to send you a sound man and we can do that yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I mean, yeah. but it's great because i would love to but we can't yeah, yeah. because yeah. then the whole yeah. thing has to be union yeah, yeah. 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 then it's it. like rules it's then L.A. moves in. Yeah, right. it adds a lot of mm-hmm. complexity. But that's the other side of the city. The city looks at it as a business and a revenue source. Right. Rather than, uh, I mean, they'd arts. like to say it's supporting the arts, but right. Right. <laughs> it's not. It's about licensing. Yeah. It's about, yeah, yeah. yeah. permitting. It's, you've yeah. created such a cohesive community, though. I mean, with all the work that you've done and the people that you've enlisted to help you. So it's really nice. I love what you're doing. You're really building it from the ground up, and you're to the lead you know, characters in this big web in the mm-hmm. Boston area That's for different. filmmaking and, you know, yeah. well, weaving thanks, a beautiful yeah. tapestry, the two yeah. of you are. Yeah, sure. and we try to, you know, especially with casting and stuff, we try to, like, find people that are active, yeah. they're active artists in Boston. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's important because they're we'll out try there. We try to give people a chance who they might not be film actors, but they do a great job, you know. Yeah. And they have. I don't know. I don't know about you, but I want to be a, a vampire. In there. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be a slayer. <laughs> but, um, zoom in. <laughs> Get that? I'm just joking. There's nobody there. I know. But um, cool if there was. Yeah, I mean, I think we, you know, we we're trying to get better and better about like giving people opportunities who wouldn't otherwise get them. And I think we we as we progress, we learn you know more and more ways t- to do that, and I think we'll continue to get better at that. Um, but I think that's important. Is if you're going to create a community, you have to make right. make spaces for the idea is to make spaces for people who are who are not going to be able to break into the other mainstream stuff and we don't we I, I don't feel like I don't we're not sitting there like waiting for the exciting day when we get to like work with the city to to well, get tax breaks or anything I mean and it's this just is not something I talk about a lot too is like people will meet that want to do a film but they want a perfect storm of elements they want a big budget they want this actor they want all this stuff and that just means that you're never going to make your film. Mm-hmm. So for Which us, why you start with bad ideas, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, and so we have a lot of scripts that we can't make because yeah. they're going to be too many elements that too we can't too. get a hold of. So we're just making the movies we can, mm-hmm. you know, and we're tra- doing them the best we can. And uh, but I think that's important. Just like go out and make something. Yeah. You totally. know, so encouraging people yeah. to just go and create work and then move on, mm-hmm. get it done. Fast. And then do the next do one. Do the better, next one. You know, you know? Yes. Yes. Keep, keep going. So, but this waiting around for like the perfect camera and the perfect, it, like, forget it. I love just the idea it. of the iterative design where you're just growing with the yeah. community and they're growing right. with you, and it's like this. Yeah. With your so, film, and yeah, it just all so much sort of more support that organically. Way. Yeah. I mean, we we sort of got into making films like expecting like, oh, we're gonna make this. Nobody's ever gonna see it. Nobody's ever gonna. 
care. Yeah. We've already and, gone way far you know, beyond we, what we thought was possible. <laughs> <laughs> we, just, we, got already yeah, we got I mean, it's like all bonus. I mean, like, oh, you want to distribute yeah. our film? Okay. Like, <laughs> yeah. Cool. We thought, like, nobody would care. And then, you know, the next one, we thought, like, oh, okay, well, that was just lucky. Like, nobody will care about this one. And then, you know, that one got picked up, too. And so we sort of feel like, okay, well, at least somebody out there is getting kind of what we're doing or trying to do, and they, they think it's a wor it worthwhile to... Can so do you guys, like, um, can you actually pay the rent and buy groceries? No. Not yet. No. So you we can spend a lot of our day own jobs. Money. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, we've been running Kickstarters, and then we end up doing yeah. quite a bit more yeah. on top of that just to get it yeah. done. That would be nice. That would be nice. But yeah, you know. And uh, to return to another, like, when you were, like, in, in high school, did you think you were going to be a filmmaker, or did you think you were going to, you know, do this type of uh, artsy, edgy thing? Seemingly edgy. Thing. I mean, for me, You're I in well, Western I Western New York. I know. I actually had a good high school that had a lot of arts, which yeah, is like yeah. kind of funny because I hated it at the time. But yeah, looking back, it actually was a very good public school. Um, and I was in AV club. I would go yeah, shoot yeah, plays yeah, and yeah, games yeah. and stuff. But um, I was so focused on music at that point uh -huh. that I was going to be in a band that was going to tour a lot and be popular. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> you know, you and were that a didn't happen. But, or you were a singer. Yeah. So I started on guitar and singing, yeah. and uh, now now you play. I switched to drums eventually and bass. And bass. But um, so but the focus was never uh, to have a backup plan. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, and yeah, yeah, Mike yeah. has a little different experience because he actually went to school. But I just came, <laughs> I came here. I was like, it's a city; it'll do. Uh, yeah. and <laughs> maybe I should have gone to New York or LA. But, <laughs> um, I, I <laughs> but I'm here. We're glad you're here. Yeah. We're glad you're here. Yes, very glad. I think I decided in high school, uh, having done a few yeah. kind of film projects with like VHS cameras sure, and sure. editing on a VCRs. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, that film was just not, it was too I know, expensive, it's only recently, it required too many resources. And so I think, yeah. you know, I got into music and we did, we toured and did stuff for years. And then recently, as the film technology has become so that viable. That you can edit on your laptop yeah. and yeah, yeah. you can not have to pay for films. Yeah. 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 Expensive. So I think that yeah. threw us so right it, back in. It really and we, were, down. we were waiting for that, I think, really. Yeah, yeah. well, it kind of happened with, we were doing music videos and we were working with other directors and, um, that was very expensive and we wanted to keep doing it and mm -hmm. we had a lot of fun and we learned a lot uh and so that just meant that we would buy it we bought a camera and started doing it ourselves and mm -hmm. then now throughout so many music videos and movies like our gear is getting better and better and our skills are catching mm -hmm. up and mm -hmm. yeah um but it is a process do you have a place where you like house all of your props and costumes like how does our that, attic, attic <laughs> okay, is the attic it's space a, we, that... we joke about like um because we're involved in other things like um we do this thing called the encyclopedia show where it's like a it's like a variety show but they always need props for it and they're like they're like how does the uh the cassiola epstein uh, prop house look for <laughs> getting these things you know we're like oh yeah we've got all those things like yeah. Yeah. we just have weird weird stuff that we've accumulated um over the years but I think yeah, we, we we always talk about like how we really want to have a studio space. Yeah. I mean, that's our big. That's, that's like our dream at this point. Still. Oh, so talk about that a bit because I was yeah. about to ask you how you felt the future sort of was mapping itself out for you. Or yeah, I think if we could get a big empty room, we could be making so much more. Okay. <laughs> so we've been trying to do that, and yeah. and um, it's just hard because we would want to do it in Somerville, but it's. Uh, mm -hmm. y the land here is very not financially viable so it's very expensive yeah so yeah. um so it's yeah you have to rent airspace that's been a question is if we do we go out of the city to to find a space eventually to have a film studio mm -hmm. yeah we want to do like a i mean one of our projects that we really want to do is like a 60s like we star trek barbarella space movie oh. and we just need to build like a giant <laughs> spaceship set, and leave it know. there yeah, a month. I mean, we need to. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. forever. So. Like, uh, for Magnetic, we built these, well, we hired um, this wonderful Somerville artist, Katron, to build us these pods, time travel pods that the character would get into. Oh, wow. And they're enormous. And right now, they're like. In the back room. <laughs> Those <laughs> like were things with the doors and the window, right? Yeah. Yes. yeah. Oh, wow. They're enormous. And, yeah. like, they're just taking up space. But, like, she was like, Oh, I can, you know, somebody else is interested in them, you can sell them, you can get rid of them. I'm like, no, these are, like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, yeah. Uh, I can paint them orange and put them in something else. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, I've always But yeah, there. now we've got our whole back But room now it's home. like we have a whole room that's unusable, you know? Yes. <laughs> Maybe so, you can sell them the, to this, a telephone company and they'll use them for telephone books in summer. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. They make, they make <laughs> really cool telephones. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just like stuff like we're accumulating like big things now, you know? So yeah. it's, uh, it's hard. 
Yeah, it's time for a big studio space. Yeah. Yeah. That mm -hmm. would be the goal and the cool. dream. And then the dream also would be to make it available to other filmmakers because I think yes. that is the thing that I run up against the, uh, the most as a producer is finding spaces to mm -hmm. work in. Um, Did you ever see the film about the making of Dr. Strange Love? I have The hanger? No, the, it's a great, uh, I don't even know the title, but they had a huge hangar in England, mm -hmm. right? In which they had this plane. And even when the guy's riding, I think this was the old Croydon um, riding the uh, riding the missile down, right? Yeah. Wahoo! He's like ten feet above the ground. Right? Yeah. Right. right. It's totally yeah. cool. Yeah. Oh my God! The sets from yeah. um, two thousand one too. Yeah. It's just like oh, yeah. they're amazing to see, yeah. and they're enormous. Yeah. You know. I I went when I uh, well. Go TV, on. I went to see two thousand one. I guess I was a senior in high school. I was stoned on acid, <laughs> with, uh, a straight girlfriend. And I sat through two shows of it. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't move. <laughs> it's like a five-hour show. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm watching, the question I mean, is, does she sit through both shows? Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do drugs, but I would sit through two shows. Yeah. Well. I would sit through two shows. Yeah. Yeah. I love it enough to do that. Yeah. Yeah. We saw, we yeah. saw the, uh, they just did like a 70-millimeter uh, millimeter, um, oh. print of it that they showed at Somerville Theater recently. We mm -hmm. saw that. It was really mm -hmm. cool to see. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you feel like you want to have a film made of you in your process? Okay. No. Um, well, we always, it's funny, we try, so, <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> too many thoughts are coming out of us. <laughs> so with 10, we had people running around with the camera, a camera, <laughs> the entire time. <laughs> yes. And we put together like a two hour documentary of like yeah. how we did it. And mm -hmm. uh, there's like so a behind, cool. uh, it's like a making of that's really not, Featurette. we decided to, to cut it together. Um, with no, like, there's no additional material. There's no commentary. There's mm -hmm. no, inter there are no interviews. Yeah. It's just quite literally just cut up. So three. It's like day yeah. one. Here are some segments of things that happened yeah. that were interesting. Well, I saw that that you did that for yeah. this latest movie. I saw that the, the Kickstarter like updates were like full of these yeah, right. diaries, yeah. Uh, diaries yeah. Yeah. which yeah, were so great. I think it's cool to keep people informed of the process mm -hmm. because um, everybody knows making a movie is hard, but I'm not sure everybody like actually know <laughs> how insane it gets um well when we cut it's called a trip to specter island is the is behind this. the scenes doc of 10 and um it's on youtube and stuff but um i we, when we were editing it i had to look at kind of the ending especially we're like really losing this is our minds. day eight of really two hours of sleep a night and like you can um, see the eyes are dilated yeah. and they're like <laughs> and it was, it was interesting to decide really whether we're like, should we is this something that we want to be public that we want yeah. people to see our us in this state, uh -huh. um, and we decided to, to do it. So it's very, it's a very. I mean, it's not nothing terrible happens in it, but it's a very honest yeah. look at our experience with it. But and so that's something like interesting. I think we kind of failed at more with like magnetic because we have such a small crew and we have some behind the scenes footage. I actually mm -hmm. have to go through it soon. And then like tribids, we have like very very little, which is too bad because there's like we got attacked by bees while we were shooting. I you know, like, that. So yeah. Yeah. like it's just yeah. like. That would be great footage, yeah. you know? <laughs> and like, there's just so many little things that happen that uh, would be uh, very interesting. Um, I think because I watch these like documentaries on like the making of X film, you know. Yeah. So um, it's fascinating to me as a filmmaker. I'm not sure if it's interesting to anybody else, but um, so that is interesting. And then, so my other thought was our next film that we've been it's it's gotten on the back burner a couple of times but we want to do a film with just the two of us where we're shooting each other mm -hmm. and um it's like a crazy multi-dimensional story um so that would sort of be about us but like not really because it's, yeah. it's all it's about building. us <laughs> you know but like it, it would be us. just us like on screen for two hours not only <laughs> i'd sit through two shows of that <laughs> who knows a lot it won't only, it might be only terrible us. we might yeah. never release it we might never make it we might never make it um, but it's been on the back burner as something that we could do for very little money, and so mm -hmm. without having to raise money and stuff, um, but still be something that's cool. Yeah. But we, I think we learn filmmaking through by watching behind the scenes oh, yeah. docs, and and mm -hmm. uh, I love director's commentaries yeah. on mm -hmm. on films, like especially when the actor's not there, because usually when the actor's there, they're like, "Remember what we ate for lunch?" That it's very, it's very like mundane, and they talk about whatever. Whereas if it's just a director commentary, they're usually talking about how much trouble, like how they had to solve all these problems. And then I'm like, yeah. this is the stuff I'm, I care about. Yeah. I don't actually care about the movie or the, you know, the acting. I care about the, how did they actually like power through and get this thing made? One of the best commentaries that we watch or listen to right before 10 was from Carrie. Mm. And it was the art director. Uh, uh, the whole time saying, like, like I a, got this prop at this little bodega yeah. down in 
wherever and we got this thing there and then yes. we just bought this and we just threw it in that scene. It was just like fascinating. Yeah. Well, it's all uh, endless sort of MacGyvering, right? Yeah, it is. That's, yeah. That's, oh, yeah. All yeah. filmmaking is yeah. just problem solving. You right. get to the set and you're like, yeah. how do we make this happen in the so next hour? So you have hour? to really trust that you can do it because I, I'm sure if you did too much thinking in advance, you might say, God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no matter how much you plan, you can't, I mean, and nothing is yeah. going to be as perfect Never as it is in your mind. So it's yeah. it's how perfect can you get it in an hour? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that's, that's important for people to hear because people who often think that in order to do things, they have to do them a certain way. They have right. to be well, you know, up to some perfection is idealism mm -hmm. or standard yeah. that actually doesn't exist. Yeah, no. mm -hmm. I, I used to. Uh, uh, sailboats across oceans for a living and uh, uh, train people to do it and have crews and so on. And uh, all the time you're making decisions with incomplete information mm -hmm. and, uh, and having to make your best judgment all the way through. And uh, it's really... And stuff know, is at stake. Your yeah. life is actually yeah, at stake. Yeah, yeah. there. Yeah. But, you know, uh, your outcome is at stake. Right. And, right. and, and, and it's And important. those decisions are yeah. from script to shooting to yeah. editing. Like, it never stops where you're, where you're making compromises right. with yeah. the initial exactly. vision yeah. and yeah. the initial yeah. how it's supposed to be. Yeah. Ninety percent of editing is like is like Solving damage problems. control and problem yeah, like, solving. Yeah, well, we, we didn't get that <laughs> shot. It yeah, really is or, like yeah. You know, this person has glasses on in the scene for some reason. Yeah, like, yeah. Rotoscope <laughs> them out. Rotoscope <laughs> them out. Yeah. Yeah, like, <laughs> there's so many things that like, digital yeah. technology you is don't great. Catch, yeah. Right. Great team building opportunity. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, I mean, my background is in engineering, and um, oh, so I think engineering? electrical engineering, mm -hmm. and so I think like. My whole life, I think I've just liked problem solving, and so mm -hmm. maybe that's what I like about filmmaking is that basically you're just, it, it really is just problem solving. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe people don't get that too, and they get, you know, they... they you can't get flustered. Yeah, you have you, to just know just you're going to go done. in, and there's going to be a thousand things wrong, and you have to figure out which ones to address, which ones to ignore, you know, how to get everybody to... It, a lot of it is also personnel management and, yeah. and you know, getting people on board difficult. with... Getting twenty people to show up at the same place at the same time is yeah. not it's easy. Hard. I, I, used to, I was used to both run catering teams and also construction teams, which was exactly the same job. And trying to get everybody to show up at the same time was really yeah. that was a yeah. big deal. Mm -hmm. And then how to work around the sequence. Right. And yeah. yeah, and then the sequence. Yeah. Right. There's often a sequence. And if the fish doesn't show up, you gotta figure out what to do with the saltine crackers that mm -hmm. will do the job. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> well with with um, Tributes, especially we had a makeup artist, and each person took almost an hour. So yeah. we had a sequence of, oh. of get this person yeah. in the chair, and then we can shoot this scene with these two people, and then while well, these people are in the chair, and uh, if one person was late by 20 minutes, it's it threw off the whole day. day. Then, yeah. And you had to do this every day. Yeah, and oh. pretty much every day it was like, all right, well, I guess we're shooting this now. You know. <laughs> well, one of the things about having so. small budgets is that we have to we have to also have very few shoot days. So right. you know, a typical film, I don't even know what, what it is anymore. Probably at least a month. Well, yeah, 30 days is like minimum, and yeah. then I think they often do 90. A typical Hollywood film, I think, is 90 days. Or so we're shooting in 10 days. days. Yeah. So it's 16 hour days or more. No, wow. some, I mean, for this, we, we kept it to 12 mostly, yeah. We kept yeah. it pretty standard. But, um, but you have to be really efficient. You can't, yeah. you can't wait for a problem to get solved. Like, you just have to say, okay. Next. <laughs> solve it, do, it, do what we can now, and move on. Because, you know, we, right. we had a very rigid. You know, schedules. We had two days where we had full cast. Basically, we had, I mean, especially that first day, we had. I think we really had like thirty mm -hmm. people there. Has anything ever happened that has really shut you down and you've had to like recover from? I don't think so. Right? No, luckily. Um, we've had really no. I mean, I, sh I shouldn't jinx this, but we've had very. We've been very lucky with like no injuries and no, yeah. you know. I'm always or that's flooding the thing that, or the thing that always makes me nervous yeah. is like somebody getting hurt. I'd rather we've like had things to break than for people. weather and stuff. But, yeah, we had weather, but, but that was not. Yeah. And now, for as far as directing goes, wow, is it something where, like, you know, I just imagine, like, Wonder Woman, where you, like, spin around and put on a different, like, outfit, you know, is it is it complete, do you turn into different people? I mean, do you have to be, what is what is directing take? Uh, well, I think, like, also, we always send an email after the fact, and we're like, sorry for all the yelling. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, you yeah. gotta work fast, and it comes out. Yeah, People mostly understand, wrong. too, it's not, they're not. But I think for us, because it's so condensed, our time on set, that we try to meet with people before. Okay. So we really try to sculpt the characters in meetings that are that are relaxed, ahead of time, yeah. this is what we want. And then luckily, people usually come up knowing their lines. Yeah. Yeah. You know? we usually so by the time we get to too. set, it's like, all right, stand there and, and do it. Yeah, and we try to let people create, like once they understand what it is, let them run with it. Yeah. Yeah. And then they usually run in the right direction. So I guess maybe we're a little hands off in that respect. 
Um, yeah, a lot of times they do things with characters that we don't really exactly expect, and we're like, oh, that's great, that's yeah. better. Because they, in a way, the actors like spend more time getting to know the characters mm -hmm. than we do, because mm -hmm. we're looking at a big picture thing, right? Yeah. And so sometimes there are very specific elements of characters that are important to us. But a lot of times, like we don't, we're not really worried about like some of these nuances of the characters because they're not. It's not really important to the thing. And then the actors will create like the ticks and the movements and the ideas. And I'm like, oh, that's really great. That really reinforces like, you know, all these elements. And so, you know, we don't really we don't improvise things. We don't improvise dialogue on set. Like we just don't have time for that. Yeah. But um, a lot of times we let we let the actors kind of like work to create if they want to create blocking or movement or other mm -hmm. you know kind of things. A lot of times they end up doing more of that work than we do, and then we kind of look at it and say, like, oh, no, no, that messes up some other yeah. aspect, or, or that's great. And um, so we just, we try to, like, trust them to develop the characters in that context. Um, and I think that, you know, that works for us, and the type of acting is very, we, our films are very artificial yeah. in the sense that they're the not actors dramas are not, that they're are not, realistic. Yeah. yeah, so. We're not looking for, like, the performance that's, like, the, perfect capture of sure. this emotional moment. It's not really the, the type of movie or what we're even, what we are interested in. Mm -hmm. So um, so mostly like, you know, we just get the people in the right place. We tell them, you know, what, Scene we're doing. When, when we're doing the thing. <laughs> um, and then we kind of work through it and we look at it on camera and make sure, you know, things will look in the right, like they're happening in the right places. Mm -hmm. We find ways to, and if they have ideas, you know, we're pretty open to talking about them, I think, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if somebody as was like, not slowing it down. yeah, as long as it doesn't take too much <laughs> time. You know, I, I think that a lot of people uh, don't appreciate, like, uh, uh, for an actor, what, what it takes for an actor to do, like, a 15 second, oh, uh, yeah. 30 second shot. Oh, yeah. And how to create the nuance of that right. uh, situation. No matter, you know, whether they're given direction or not, uh, they, there's, uh, like, a real uh, power of, again, creation there. I was just reading an article in the New Yorker, and Charlotte Rampling uh, was talking about uh, uh, a scene she was playing in, in, I don't even know the movie, I think it's called 45, actually, because uh, this English couple had been married for 45 years, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the wife's experience of this was boring and uh, uh, not alive. And at the anniversary party, they get up to dance, and Rampling uh, brings across in, in her face, in her body, all of that boredom. Yeah. <laughs> and all of that feeling of what was missing, you know, in like a, again, a 30 second scene. Mm -hmm. And she talks about how she prepared for it, you know, and then how she had to let it all go. Right. And just right. go be it somehow. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So even in these simple, you know, what you might think are simple scenes or general scenes, there's some real. Yeah. It's a visual medium, yeah. I mean, right? Yeah. So you, yeah. you're not, it's not, I mean, I think, you know, more and more as we, as we learn, we, we think about this and we say, okay, like, let's just, we try to write out dialogue as much as possible, get rid of all the dialogue we can, really cut it, and, yeah. um, and think about how we can, it's just a visual, like, blocking, visual mm -hmm. presentation, uh, lighting, all these things that convey the ideas without having to have the characters, mm. you know, say, say things. And I think we, we... Like, I feel sad. You know, we like, get... Well, you can show that with the lights. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So, oh, interesting. We get, and we silent get, film. We get better and better at that. I, I mean, I think we you know, have a very long way to go, but we yeah. get, but we've gotten better and better as we, as we progress, and we think about it more. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think, you know, getting, getting those nuances and getting yeah. the actors to, to portray those, I mean, that's what, I guess, what the director... Mostly directors just get everybody to show up in the, in the room. That's the ninety percent of the job, I think, mm -hmm. and the other ten percent is being the one responsible. Getting getting the performance to you know match what needs to be conveyed. Mm -hmm. um, so now we've talked about the um, the festivals that you'd like this latest film to be ready for. Mm -hmm. um, do you have some sense of where you'd like this to go? I, I understand from what you've said that it's great that things have actually happened, and you know that's enough in a certain way, but. It sounds like you're trying to experience more um, uh, credence in the film world, or get the, get the stuff out to bigger audiences, or whatever. Do you have some sort of, I don't know, what is uh, uh, objectives or yeah. a plan, or it's like like do you have do you like yeah. would you be using some famous actor for two seconds in a picture just to get the, the name up <laughs> the there? Name up and there and the we, that's so iffy. We I, talk about it all. We the time, do talk yeah. about it a lot. Um, it changes 
a lot of how you have to work mm. once you involve mm. that SAG. SAG. Uh, <laughs> um, so it would really need to be a much larger budget than what we've been working with is what we've right. decided. Because um, I've worked on SAG things and I've seen how it, the rules can slow you down. Um, mm-hmm. And it's just not the way we've been able to work mm-hmm. with the budgets we have. Yeah. Um, eventually, you know, maybe that would be cool. I think it's really cool to work with local people um, mm-hmm. that are awesome. Because there's so much talent in so Boston. It's insane. Cool. But, uh, no, our plan is to keep making movies. Yeah. You know, as many as Good. we can. We hope so. And as short a span of time as we can and see where that takes us. Yeah. You know, yeah. and hopefully it keeps growing, you know. I can always shoot Christopher Walken out. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, you could, uh, yeah, a, lot of the, a lot of people, you'd be surprised, uh, you know, how, how relatively high, t- I mean, you're not going to get Brad Pitt, but you can get relatively high tier actors yeah. just by having the money, right. essentially. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not, they, you know, they need to work and they're not, they're not working. Mm-hmm. They're, they want to be working. Yeah. I mean, actors want to, want to act. That's so why you see them on insurance mm-hmm. car commercials. Yeah. All right. Or, yeah. You know, you know. Um, so it's interesting. I mean, I've worked on, uh, we both worked on films where there have been, you know, C, C list actors and so on, um, and you know they've been, they've all been uh, yeah, experiences have been, been great. So they've all been very nice and very professional and great. And great. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but it's a financial it's it a financial sure. issue. So for us, I think right now what we're looking to do is accumulate a catalog of stuff that kind of represents what we our kind of vision and our ideas in filmmaking, um, and to be able to use that to start making enough money to. Yeah. reinvest that into and hopefully more. as they come out um, if they make any money through streaming and stuff it, we can push it forward mm-hmm. that's basically it yeah mm-hmm. and and w- what I've heard from many people is like once you get to about five films that's when you start having enough revenue that you can you know I guess we'll generate the next do uh, 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 another interview at that point, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I hope so. It's a really long cycle. I mean, this is part of the yeah. part of the reason why we have to do it every year is that um, so it ten just came out this year. We shot it at the end of two thousand twelve. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, you know, our, the movie Magnetic's were just coming out. Magnetic. We shot in two thousand. We started in two thousand thirteen. The very late two thousand. Yeah. Um, and it'll be coming out 2016. Yeah. So, so you know, this movie, uh, Tribbets, Blood of, the, Blood of the Tribbets, will be twenty. It'll come out wow. ideally. Ideally. Well, it'll come out next year in festivals, but then ow, ow. So you're, you're, so it's like a two-year process. For yeah, because you yeah. you'll be editing one film and doing sound, you know, score, but shooting for another. Yeah, the idea is to you're always, so always be yeah. in like a Yeah, so like right master. now we're getting together all the magnetic assets to send to the distributors while we're editing tributes, you know, and then we want to start shooting in the next four months. May-ish. We want to start shooting the next one, so we have it ready for the cycle again. Yeah. So um, you guys are you are also uh, your directors, but your producers, yeah. film writers, That's costume. Yeah, yeah, so I do all the wardrobe. Yeah. All costume, do yeah. All the yeah, really. <laughs> I try to help, but I'm you're right. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's insane. Um, yeah. well, it's it's uh, a financial necessity. No, no, <laughs> well, yeah. okay, it is yeah. too. But with stuff like that, like props mm-hmm. and wardrobe, yeah. I am so uh, neurotic about world building, uh-huh. and it has to look a certain way. And like I could probably work with with somebody else on it, but it would just be as much me telling them yeah. as yeah. if I could just do it. You know. Yeah. So yeah. at this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. Eventually, maybe you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and at some point, maybe I'd like to hire just a designer rather than having to go find the clothes. Like I've mostly worked with a lot of vintage clothes mm-hmm. for our films, course, which is yeah, yeah. hard because if you need to spill blood on it, you can only do it once. Yeah. You know, uh, 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 <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. so stuff like that. But like because at this point, like I'm so invested in what's in every scene and it does it reflect the world that we're creating and and everything else that it's like I can't give up that level of control. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, that's um, great. But yeah, so it is a little bit of a neurotic control issue that I have. I mean, I think we like doing too. everything, and it gives mm-hmm. us you flexibility. Know, I'm sure I could find somebody for free, like dress all these people. You you're know, gonna have a neurosis. Oh. That's not a bad one to have. You know, I want everything on screen right. to to reinforce yeah. the vision. You know? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I can't even imagine though, like like we had mentioned about the scoring. I can't even imagine having like a post production team where like there's an editor who makes who edits the thing, then it gets sent off to a sound mm-hmm. designer and then it gets mm-hmm. sent off to score. And then and so you see it at the you end. You just have to, to it has to go through those like those steps. Those gates, and there's not yeah. really an iterative process and they can't really feed back onto one another. And I'm like, how does this even happen? Like oh, there's sure. no I I think, you know, that those are ideas that have been abandoned mostly, you know, the idea of what they call picture lock where you have it's cut and now it goes to sound and they do mm-hmm. all the rest of the stuff. And you know, people talk about picture lock still who are talking about kind of older, you know, if you went to film school, you'd probably talk about picture lock. But um, 
I don't. And mo- most people I know who are making films, they're like, "There's no, there's no such thing as picture lock." I'm editing yeah, the film. Yeah, I might change this. Two yeah, years from I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm editing the movie that you know, I'm editing Magnetic, you know, now before it goes to the it's final. It's last chance to, to, to change. Go, you know, we can only fix things like the last last time to fix things. Um, whereas in the old process, you know, it would have been done a year ago, and that's, yeah. that's no, that. That's the end. Yeah, you can't really do anything about it. So mm. never ends till you till you send it to the yeah. people who sell it. It's gone. And it's, then you can't fix. You can fix it, but it's nobody's gonna see the fix version. Well, then you do the director's cut yeah. as a you know, additional. <laughs> other other than the Eugene's, would would it have been also the technology in the past? Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, it was definitely technology. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Cutting the technology. technology. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It wasn't just it wasn't just a, a, a meaningless dogma. Do. It was yeah, just yeah. yeah it was yeah. it was technology. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Technology has changed so much. I mean, I'm you know I do. I, I on the same monitor I flip between my my sound computer and yeah. my video computer yeah, exactly. and you know just it's, yeah, yeah. It's, everything is happening in one room for us in post mm-hmm. you know so say a little bit more about the editors and others in film who have really had an impact on what you do on how you do what you do um, do you want to talk about Sure, I mean, I think, uh, yeah, especially um, initially, we were most inspired, I'd say, by Hitchcock. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a lot of the perspective shots that he would use, mm-hmm. um, you know, you'd see the bullet come out of the gun, or, you know, and then just zooming in so far in people's faces and, and seeing the eyes move and, and letting that carry emotion. Um, so we definitely are very, very inspired by that. And a lot of 60s and 70s movies, Stanley Kubrick is a, is a huge favorite. Um, and then all the B movies. All the Roger Corman classics. Yeah, my, <laughs> and, um, my whole history is, I think, influenced by like, by yeah. low budget movies and being able to kind of have interesting protagonists and interesting stories that are not, you know, kind of typical ways of presenting things. John um, Carpenter. John Whitley, yeah, I love John Carpenter. David Lynch. Um, David Lynch. And all the weirdos. Yeah. <laughs> and then in modern in modern times, there are people who are doing this the, the kind of stuff that I think we aspire. They're they're. They were probably influenced by the same sorts of things we were, and they're they're kind of doing the thing. They're a little ahead of us, but they're doing the same sort of things we are trying to do. And that's like um, this guy Shane Carruth, who made um, Primer and Upstream Color. I really like him as a filmmaker. I think he really does interesting stuff. Um, and uh, I like Peter Strickland a lot, who made who made Duke of Burgundy, who I what I mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. and um, he made a, a another film called Barbarian Sound Studio. Um, which is kind of, it's an interesting movie. It's like a, about, it's influenced by Italian giallo films, mm. but it's about a sound designer who, from England who kind of has his careers kind of failed and he gets kind of like shipped over to Italy to do the sound design on this extremely violent, awful uh, giallo, like witch film. Mm. And um, you never actually see the film but that he's doing. You hear these awful, <laughs> like the awful, and they talk about the awful things that are happening mm-hmm. in the scenes and he's making the sounds. And he starts to kind of like lose his mind and get caught up in the film itself. It becomes about him, his like relationship with oh, the, the film. Excellent. It's film. a, it's a really interesting movie. I feel like it doesn't, it doesn't quite get to a hundred percent, but it's a, it's an interesting movie. And then Duke of Burgundy, his follow up is, is like one of my favorite. It's probably my favorite movie about love, about navigating love and relationships that has ever been made. So. Mm. Oh wow, that's great. And you uh, have talked about um, your deep involvement with community and the reciprocity of, of this um, kind of relationship. I want you to say something about your teaching as a part of that. About my, uh, my, my career teaching? Well, yeah, passing on what you know about this. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we learn so much. Uh, you know, I, I, I always, I talk about the times when we didn't have a car, or I didn't have a car, and I used to get rides from everybody. And now I'm like, so when people need a ride, I'm always happy to, you know, I'm saying, oh yeah, you know, we're more than happy to mm-hmm. drive you somewhere because we, you know, I feel like I, I have 30 years of owing, you know, people this, this. Mm-hmm. And um, in the same sort of way, I feel like with film and with music, I really learned it all by just, you know, peeking over the shoulder of other people, and uh, and we got through all this stuff by getting the help of other people. And I'd love to see, you know, that those the people who are now kind of where we were once kind of get the support and help they need and so we have more of a community and more activity in Boston so I think we love going to other people's sets and and Mm -hmm. participating in whatever way we can and we do I mean we do sound on movies I do we've done camera on movies um, and you try to pass on to your actually your formal students at Northeastern some of this experience but also well I teach a really different thing at Northeastern so yeah 
Yeah, but I think teaching, you know, learning and teaching is all the same. It's it really, honestly, the thing that fascinates me about teaching in general is just the same kind of thing. It's really a problem-solving process where you say, okay, here are the things I need to convey. Mm -hmm. Let me think about how to approach it so that th this individual or this set of students. And, and so my background was in engineering, and I'm in a department that's very, very different from that. Mm -hmm. And so that's been really fun for me because I'm like, I can't teach this material in the way that you is it. right for me to learn it. Mm -hmm. I have to teach it in the way that is right for the, the mm -hmm. student group to learn it. What department are you in? Uh, communication sciences and disorders. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did I say something about auditory? Yes, I do yeah. audiology. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so I think you know, it, it, part of what attracted me to going into teaching audiology was that it was an opportunity to, to take a group who were not trained the same way that I was and kind of like force them into problem solving thinking and kind of that. The, what I would call an engineering mentality rather mm -hmm. than um, the way that, you know, sticking to the way that they had been previously trained. So, mm -hmm. Cool. Is there, is there a particular place in the world that you'd like to film? Like to travel outside of the States? Is there a, like one place that really, you know, calls to you both? What do you think? I just want an empty white room. <laughs> yeah. It's horrible. There's a quote from like Shakespeare, like about how like he doesn't need to go to Italy to write about Italy. You know? mm -hmm. And I found that fascinating because like when I was younger, I wanted to travel a lot, and now I like really don't even care. Because um, yeah. like I just create the world wherever. Yeah. I have In a big it. white I mean, room. Definitely with Trivids, it would have been nice to to go to Europe because they have the ruins of castles and stuff mm -hmm. that would have really. Do we have work around? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure. With I love a castle. Yeah, a castle. Would be great. <laughs> but it doesn't have to be. So, it could so be a castle in Boston. It's a, a blue room with with uh, with, uh, with computers. Yeah, so green, 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 green. Room. Yeah, we yeah, do, yeah. we we do very little like little that. green yeah, screen, yeah, yeah. but um, yeah. we do get a lot of compositing where we take you know if like, I mean this is a practical consideration also where uh, if you have a scene where. I'll give you an example. Um, a, a character is looking in a window and seeing yeah. something, and the interior, the exterior that we use for that isn't the same place as we wanted to film the interior. It's not mm -hmm. suitable, so we do a lot of compositing where we just like cut out the window and paste in another mm -hmm. image and mm -hmm. those sorts of things. Um, so that's a really common. Yeah, that's the kind of effects that we're doing, and that's just it's practical. Again, it's just that we don't have locations that Match. work for those things, mm -hmm. or we can't afford to do it that way. Or mm -hmm. yeah, Are there local people that you guys worked with to learn the ropes, so to speak? Not really, right? Or you just <laughs> grunted it out. So not really. I mean, um, you try. We made these two music videos with directors, and I think we learned a ton on them. So one is yeah. Arrival with Jeanette for singing uh -huh. Darling, and the director was uh, Ted Cormie. Yeah. And um, he's like a director's director, like he. Like just following him through that, it took us a year to shoot mm -hmm. that. It was two 11 years. days yeah. of shooting, two years, yeah. So just following his whole process of finding locations, yeah. finding the yeah. people, finding all the things, putting it together, was like like a session in film school for me, mm -hmm. I think. And then we had worked yeah. with another guy previously, the same, a smaller shoot for the motion sick. Um, yeah. And, and like experiencing that, I'm like, okay, so that's how it's done. Let's do it. You know, like mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that's all it takes. Yeah. So. Well, that's a lot. I was saying that to Fallon today. That's sort of how my life happens. Right? Mm -hmm. Going fishing, you throw the, the line in the water and see yeah. what happens. Yeah. 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 And yeah. I think for Michael yeah. and I, like, we are just used to being like, all right, I'm going to do this now, and so I'll just teach myself everything I need to know. You know, yeah. so it's yeah. like, all right, I want to play bass now, so I'm just going to do it. Right. Yeah. And yeah. know yeah. that they I, can do it before they right. We're not booked, afraid to fail. We book yeah. the thing before we know how yeah. to do it. So we're like, <laughs> let's book the premiere, and then we'll figure it out. And yeah. we have this deadline. Cool. You know, or yeah. I'm like, let's start this it. band, and I'll learn how to play. That's that's just do it. Yeah, just do it. That's one of my favorite yeah. images of life is like, you know, just jump off the cliff, invent the, par <laughs> the parachute on the way down. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we do it anyway. Yeah. Why not just own up to that? Yeah. Or put your squirrel rings out. <laughs> this has been really such a treat. Yes. Thank you so much to the both of you for being on the show. John, for coming in and sitting well, down. I hope I wasn't. And providing your... Detractor, yes. No, no, not at all. This is great. Um, I hope it isn't the final one. Jessa, <laughs> Thanks. thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Fallon. Hey, thank you, viewers, for tuning in to Fallon's <laughs> Daily Toast. Yes. Um, again, Michael J. Epstein, Sophia Cassiola, um, the two of them, you know, they both have... Uh, presence is on the World Wide Webatron, so you can just type in their name and, and, and lots of stuff will lots come up. Of stuff a whole will universe up. will begin <laughs> to appear. So if any of totally this lost in it. In interests you, then that's where to where to go. Out to the World Wide right. Web. 
And, uh, and so good luck with everything. Thank and you. we hope to have you on the show again, and maybe again and again. And if uh, things And maybe are we can be on one of yours. And maybe, yeah, <laughs> if you want to do a little shucharoonie, <laughs> I could be you. You could be Michael. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool. Wow. Um, and yeah, so we'll just we'll keep everyone updated because we're big fans of these two. We want to yes. see them succeed. All mm -hmm. right, we want to mm -hmm. see the big white room come mm -hmm. through. <laughs> yes, that's right. All right, all right. Over and out. Much love and kindness. Okay. All right, cut. Cut. <laughs> <laughs>